Power fantasies are really the point of many video games, but a real good game is one that satisfyingly makes your weapons feel stronger over time. Here are some of our favorite examples of weapons that you can upgrade to just become super powerful. Let's talk about the Plasma Cutter from Dead Space. This is the first weapon you get in the very first Dead Space game, and it's appeared in some form in every game in the trilogy. It starts off good, being the ideal weapon for cutting off enemy limbs, which has the effect of both slowing them down and doing bonus damage, and it only gets better as you upgrade it. Now, there aren't any upgrades that made a huge difference or anything. It's all just your standard bonuses to damage, accuracy, ammo counts, and stuff like that, but it can quickly add up into making the Plasma Cutter the most powerful weapon in your arsenal. It's not that effective against large groups, so you'll really need to make some heavy use of stasis if you want to survive some of the bigger enemy ambushes, but otherwise, it's just incredibly powerful after upgrading. It's so good that you can actually easily use this start weapon for the entire game. There's even an achievement for it called One Gun. The Plasma Cutter is just awesome all around, and the only reason it's not higher on this list is because it's really good right from the start. It only just gets better as you go. Now over at number 9, let's talk Bioshock and the Wrench. Here's another starting weapon that's crazy good in the right hands. You can't actually upgrade this thing, but if you manage to get the right plasmids and tonics, then this thing goes from being a decent melee weapon to an unstoppable death machine. You're gonna have to give up a lot of your tonic slots if you want to get the most out of the wrench, but if you do, then it can pretty much kill everything in one hit, uh, besides the big daddies, of course. Everyone knows the whole one-two punch thing. You hit an enemy with electro bolt, then you smack them with a wrench. Uh, that does quad damage to enemies which is already really good, but if you combine that with tonics like Sport Boost, which makes you faster, Wrench Lurker, which makes it harder for enemies to notice you, and Wrench Jockey, which makes the wrench do more damage, and you've got a potent and super powerful combination. With enough stealth tonics, you barely have to sneak up on enemies. You'll just be zipping around the map, slapping around unaware enemies pretty easily. The only thing that's going to give you trouble are Big Daddy, so this thing isn't the ultimate strategy or anything, but it's still very, very good. Long live the wrench. The only thing more iconic than this random tool is Gordon Freeman's crowbar. Now over at number eight, let's talk about the Ebony Blade from Skyrim. Here's a pretty ridiculous weapon that starts off pretty decent and has a pretty unusual form of upgrading. The only way to make this weapon stronger is by killing people who trust you with it. Yes, seriously. For every two people you kill who are considered friendly, the weapon's enchantment will increase, maxing out after killing 10 people. It's one of the most bizarre weapon upgrading requirements we've ever seen in an RPG like this, and you have to be a real bastard to fully upgrade it, at least if you do it legitimately. Uh, you get this weapon for completing the Daedric quest, The Whispering Door, and it's a weapon belonging to the Daedric Prince of Obfuscation and Secrecy, so they're all about deceit and betrayal. So yeah, if you want a super powerful sword in Skyrim, all you have to do is murder your friends. Or you can be more messed up and do an exploit by just giving money to random beggars until they like you and then kill them instead. It's weird, but it works. It's just another day in the life for the Dovahkiin, the, the savior of Skyrim. Next over at number seven, Final Fantasy VII and the Death Penalty. This gun, which is actually Vincent's ultimate weapon, starts off pretty strong, as you'd expect from an ultimate weapon, but it has one little thing about it that makes it incredibly strong. Literally the strongest weapon in the game, even. It gets stronger for every enemy you kill with it. Normally, this wouldn't end up being that great because at a certain point, you're gonna hit the damage cap, but because of a damage overflow glitch that's way too complicated to explain here, maybe check the wiki if you're curious, Vincent's damage can pretty much keep going up forever. Ever. Kill enough enemies and even some of the most powerful enemies in the game, like Emerald Weapons, a post-game super boss, can be killed in one hit. It's gonna require a hell of a lot of grinding to get to that point. You have to kill a lot of enemies to increase the weapon's damage that much, but even a fraction of that power is incredibly useful. If you're gonna take the time to get anyone's ultimate weapons in Final Fantasy VII, you should probably get this one. It's not even that hard to get. Just take the submarine to this waterfall cave and fight some enemies. It's easy. Now over at number six, the Magnum from Call of Duty Zombies. A common feature of the zombie mode from these games is the Pack-A-Punch. For enough points, you can upgrade the weapon you've already got equipped, and usually it's a pretty major improvement, greatly increasing a weapon's damage, ammo count, reload speeds, you know. Uh, we could debate all day about which weapons are the best to pack a punch. Certain people swear by the upgraded sniper rifle in many of the games, but for this entry, we're gonna focus 
on a weapon from one of the older games. Now, the 1911 is a zombie staple, but we're going to focus on the upgrade you get for it in Black Ops 1, 2, and 3 here, called the Mustang. Normally, this gun is pretty useless for zombies. It runs out of ammo quickly and does pathetic damage. You're going to want to swap it out for something else as soon as you can if you want to survive for very long. But if you manage to hold on to it and use it on the pack-a-punch machine, then it gets way better. It fires fast, has a ton more ammo, reloads faster, and, uh, oh, yeah, it fires explosive rounds. Uh, that last one is huge, and it's a feature that the developers actually took out in later games. Maybe the new versions are technically better, but who cares? It's a grenade launcher that fires as fast as a pistol. It's awesome. This is an upgrade that transforms a weapon from being mostly useless to being a zombie horde clearing weapon of death. And it's hilarious to use. Just don't stand too close when using it. That splash damage will kill you. Now down to number five, of course, we got to mention Fallout New Vegas' Varmint Rifle. Basically, the tutorial weapon of the game, this thing is pretty much a slightly better BB gun used for hunting small game. You know, you think in a series like Fallout where people are firing portable nuclear bombs at each other that this little pea shooter wouldn't really amount to much, but with a few upgrades and the right perks, you could turn it into one of the best weapons in the game. Without modifications, it's slow to fire, it's very weak, and although it's accurate, you probably won't get much with the iron sights it starts with. Uh, using a silencer and a night vision scope, though, and then some AP ammo instead of the standard 22 ammo it normally uses, and you'll start headshotting everything in sight. Stealth builds in the new Fallout games can be ridiculous. You know, the amount of damage multipliers you get for hitting unaware enemies can be nuts. So combining those perks with this gun can make you like almost unstoppable. And on top of that, the ammo is cheap and repairing it is easy. So on top of being one of the easiest guns to maintain, it's also one of the most powerful. Now over at number four, we gotta talk Resident Evil 4. The shotgun is one of the first weapons you get in RE4, and although it's good at first, it gets pretty quickly outclassed by all the other weapons, and you'll probably end up replacing it with the Riot shotgun, which is way cooler. But if you manage to upgrade it all the way to the max level and you stick with it, then it gets special attributes that isn't explained very well in-game. Well, what the final upgrade does is that it makes it so if one pellet from the shotgun hits an enemy, then it counts as if all the pellets hit them in damage. So now you don't even have to try to be very close to enemies anymore for them to take the full force of your shotgun blast. That's a big deal. It's actually kind of ridiculous looking in action, like all these enemies just randomly having their heads explode from one stray little pellet hitting them. Uh, but when fighting big groups, it's just crazy satisfying to use. The only downside of it is that it doesn't have the same stagger effect at long range, but with the kind of damage you're doing, it doesn't really matter. This is ridiculous. Down to number three, Ninja Gaiden and the Wooden Sword. In the original Xbox game, the Wooden Sword is easily the most useless weapon and it takes the most time and money to upgrade fully. But once you do, it becomes the most powerful weapon in the game, the unlabored flawlessness. This isn't actually a starting weapon, rather it's something you can buy from Muramasa's shop. It's a wooden sword, so it's pretty much completely useless, but you can buy it for some reason if you want. Of course, we've gotten this far in the list, you know that this thing is actually secretly really good, and yes, it is. When you fully upgrade it, it transforms into a new weapon entirely. Like we said, this unlabored flawlessness, which is basically a heavy weapon like the Warhammer that can also do aerial attacks like the sword. It's already really good when you get it, but this thing actually has a special attribute on it where if your health is under 25%, then the weapon's damage increases by 150%. If you're even closer to death, then the weapon gets even stronger. And with these bonuses, this thing is actually the strongest weapon in the game by a lot. Now down to number two, Dead Rising 2 and the Super BFG. I mean, it's called the Super BFG, so of course this thing is good. Probably Probably the most mysterious combo weapon in Dead Rising 2, it's something you can't even get until after the second day, and only under very specific circumstances. Here's the thing, the standard BFG, or the Blast Frequency Gun, isn't actually all that good. It's effective against gas zombies, which is helpful, but it's only good against them. It's useless for everything else. But if you manage to combine the BFG with an amplifier, then you can make something useful. The Super BFG is a beast. It can destroy entire groups of zombies in a single hit, and it does a ton of damage to everything else. It's by far the most powerful combo weapon in the game, and absolutely essential to get once you actually know about it. Combo weapons were an awesome feature added to Dead Rising 2. It's so satisfying to take two useless things and make something awesome and useful out of them, and this weapon is probably the ultimate example of that. It really takes the cake.
Now down to number one, it's Dark Souls. You know we were gonna mention it, the straight sword hilt. In later Dark Souls games, they made it so getting weapons from a boss's soul was pretty easy. You know, just exchange the soul for a cool weapon, it's simple. But in the older games, you had to work for it if you wanted to get some of those cool weapons that the bosses used. To get most boss weapons in the original, you first had to upgrade a weapon to at least plus 10, which wasn't cheap, and then you can infuse it with a boss soul to create a new weapon. That's how it worked here. Combine the soul of Sif with a sword to create the cursed great sword of Artorias. It actually doesn't tell you anywhere that it will be cursed when creating it, but it's not the actual best version of the sword. To get the non-cursed and generally stronger version of the sword, you have to combine the soul of Sif with the first and most useless weapon in the game, the straight sword hilt. It's literally just the hilt of a sword. If you combine it with that, which means intentionally upgrading this piece of junk to plus 10, then it becomes the true great sword of Artorias. It has holy effects, great scaling, and it's just an all around really good weapon. And the only way to get it is through upgrading one of the most useless weapons in gaming history. You also get it from combining with the broken straight sword, which is also almost entirely useless. But regardless, it's a great weapon that you can only get from leveling up weapons that are literally junk. Like, these things belong in the trash. They're not even real weapons anymore, and yet here we are. And that's the point of this video. Weapons that get upgraded to become incredibly awesome and OP. These are some of our favorite examples, but we'd love to hear some of yours down in the comments, because we know you definitely got your own. If you enjoyed this video, though, clicking the like button's the best way you can help out the channel. We would really appreciate that. And if you're new, consider subscribing, maybe hitting that notification bell, because we put out new videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.